Marino, along with Kimberly Guilfoyle, Juan Williams, Jesse Waters, and Greg Gutfeld. It's 5 o'clock in New York City, and this is The Five. Today, President Trump made history with a dramatic shift of U.S. foreign policy in the Middle East. He forged ahead with his decision to declare Jerusalem Israel's capital, despite objections from Arab, European, and other world leaders, and even the Pope. We cannot solve our problems by making the same failed assumptions and repeating the same failed strategies of the past. Old challenges demand new approaches. I have determined that it is time to officially recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. While previous presidents have made this a major campaign promise, they failed to deliver. Today, I am delivering. President Trump stressed Israel's a foreign, I'm sorry, a sovereign nation with the right to determine its own capital. The president also ordered the State Department to begin the process of moving our embassy to Jerusalem from Tel Aviv. In an attempt to ease concerns, Mr. Trump wanted Palestinians to know he still remains fully committed to helping broker a peace deal. I also want to make one point very clear. This decision is not intended in any way to reflect a departure from our strong commitment to facilitate a lasting peace agreement. We want an agreement that is a great deal for the Israelis and a great deal for the Palestinians. I intend to do everything in my power to help forge such an agreement. So definitely a historic day. Juan, I thought I'd go to you first because you've covered this issue for over many presidents. Uh, the position of the United States now firmly uh, ensconced in the promise that had been made for many years that the United States would make this recognition. Uh, and finally today it happened. Right. But of course, part of that uh, policy for the longest time, Dana, has been a two state solution that we would, in terms of final status uh, mm -hmm. with regard to Jerusalem, have that as part of the negotiation, the ongoing negotiation in the United States, even with people like Bill Clinton, who were all about moving the capital, um, said, I'm sorry, the embassy said very clearly that the reason they didn't do it was to preserve the United States as a fair and, you know, well-regarded arbiter on both sides, by the Israelis and the Palestinians. So what we saw today was sort of a preemptive move. Now, you have Jared Kushner supposedly out there trying to make a deal of some kind. We haven't seen much evidence of any progress. But what we have seen now is the president, I think it's almost like a businessman, he says, you know what? Let's just shake it up. Let's put the Palestinians on notice. If you don't like the way things are going, well, then you better get well, back to but, the bargaining. But table. he wasn't the only one, Kimberly, because the crown prince, well, now King Solomon of Saudi Arabia, called Abu Mazen of uh, the Palestinians and said, "This, you know, you need to get on board with this. And, and the president, I think, recognizes that in their capitals, uh, in, the, in these different countries, they have to say what they're going to say for their domestic audiences. But this seems, I think, to be okay with the Saudi Arabians and possibly others for an anti-Iran alliance. Yes, I think so. And that's really, I think, what is, you know, behind this as well in, in large measure. But this is something that the president has been considering and contemplating for some time. There has been, uh, you know, tremendous uh, support from the Israeli community to do this and for the president to make this move. And you've seen a very solid, uh, friendship and alliance between Netanyahu and President Trump, that they work very well cooperatively. There is a lot of mutual respect there, which I think is a healthy and good thing for the United States going forward. Uh, I take him at his word. I believe him when he says that he's going to continue to try to, you know, broker a deal and work yeah. this out. But sometimes you need to broker a deal with um, a show of strength and a show of commitment. And like I said, he's been saying he's going to do it. And now, in fact, he has. But Jerusalem was always like that piece that was going to be the final bargaining chip. But after several decades with nothing ever happening, then maybe this actually is a way to get there. And I didn't hear the president say he was against a two state solution. So maybe this will actually push people to the table. I don't know. You want to see a picture of a Middle East expert? <laughs> a blank this slate. This place is an unsolved. There you go. Thank Top, you. Tabla it's rasa. an unsolvable Rubik's Cube. And we keep talking about this thing. We, as if this is going to upset some kind of peace process in the Middle East. There, 
This peace process has been upset in the Middle East since I was a child. Yep. You want, if you want a peace process, Palestinians stop killing Jews. That's a start, right? Every time it... it, it well, yeah, their it, stated, objection, it, their stated I mean, objective is the destruction of Israel. And, and also, all the Dems were for this. If you, it, Obama was for it, Hillary was for it, Bill yep. Clinton was for it, Pelosi was for it. Now, when the evil orange Republican is for it, the media is going to say that this is going to cause World War III, World War IV, <laughs> World War V. It's no different than anything anybody else has said. It, uh, the most important thing is this cha the change of address cards. Because I didn't do that when I moved, and I don't get any of my cat fancy issues. You're not going to get any <laughs> Christmas cards. No, I'm not. Well, oh. neither are they. That's true. That's like true. he sends in. Um, Jesse, what is your take on the day's news? Well, he got Schumer and I think Romney and Debbie Wasserman Schultz and Ted Cruz to all agree. Yep. So I think that's probably a pretty good deal right now. It's very symbolic. We have a great relationship with Israel, our only real partner in democracy in the Middle East. And he fulfilled a campaign promise, so I think his supporters are going to be happy about that. I think our NATO allies and our Pacific partners have to look at this and say, this is the President of the United States doing what he said he was going to do, and that has to make them feel more comfortable. And it's vintage Trump. He actually does what he says he's going to do, and then there's a bunch of hysteria, but the hysteria is not always as bad as it yeah. seems like it's going to be. And I think he kind of relishes doing things that other presidents have said they're going to do or did or didn't do, whether it's the Keystone Pipeline or cornering North Korea or withdrawing from bad trade deals or treaties or something like that. I think he enjoys this, um, but you know what? Hamas says they're going to unleash hell, and there's going to be day of rage isn't how if you're you a terrorist right. you're, all, you're always raging if, if you're a terrorist so i don't really see yeah. that much happening the united states and israel will be prepared speaking for of an ally i wanted to get your take one on turkey because they are turkey is a part of nato but the president there came out very strongly against it and said there will be fire and fury. Basically a take on what President Trump had said about North Korea. Um, and then you had this. I will just read it for you. Abbas said, these condemned and unacceptable measures are a deliberate undermining of all efforts exerted to achieve peace and represent a declaration of the United States withdrawal from undertaking the role it has played over the past decades in sponsoring the peace process. So it could end up that the Palestinians should have taken the deals that were on the table in the last couple of decades. Well, I think that's what President Trump must be thinking. Again, you shake it up. But just to go back to what you were saying, Turkey is our ally. You have the Turkish spokesman saying this is a red line for the Muslims around the world, but specifically in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when you think about what's different here, it's not that the the thought isn't isn't is anything radically shifting from what Democrats and Republicans have said in the past. The difference is that you do it as separate unilateral action apart from any larger negotiation. And so people are saying, well, what is this signal? What does this mean? This weekend I was out at the Reagan Library and they had a defense forum. And so you had people like Leon Panetta, Michelle Flournoy, uh, Mike Pompeo from CIA, even uh, you know former Secretary of State Schultz. And what they're saying is, look, Iran and Russia are moving into a power vacuum in the Middle East. You know how you have Russia now, a major ally of Syria and others. And we hear lots of talk from President Trump about, you know, we're going to be more emphatic, we're going to be more involved, but there's nothing on the ground. There's no actual policy. And so he makes this move that I think does please some part of his evangelical base, maybe even some of the orthodox uh, Jewish community in this country, which votes Republican. But in terms of Israel, I don't know that all Israelis are in support of this, because what they want is more security for their country. But they were going to be attacked regardless. I, would, I do want to bring up one thing that might get Greg going. This is uh, the Pope, <laughs> ah. Pope oh. Francis. Now you've he done said, it. I cannot remain silent about my deep concern for the situation that has developed in recent days. And at the same time, I wish to make a heartfelt appeal to ensure that everyone is committed to respecting the status quo of the city in accordance with the, with the relevant resolutions of the United Nations. But the, the, everybody spoke out before the president actually gave a speech because he said that he's okay with talking about the boundaries as they were uh, discussed for East Jerusalem. Wait. I'm trying to maintain a level of politeness about the Pope. You knew this was going to set me off. You did this on purpose. Yes. Look, this is an ongoing conflict over a religious claim over a city. So it's like three teams arguing over home field advantage. All right? I don't play the sport. So I don't have to listen to what the Pope says. I don't care about what the Pope says. I don't think he helps it in this situation. I think he should just stay out of it. You know, 
I can't. I can barely control myself when he talks about climate change. So I think I, I don't want to. I don't want to talk about the Pope. Did Gustav should... just say the Pope should butt out of the Jerusalem? <laughs> yes, I did. Okay, I did. Okay, I just wanted to clear that up. Sure <laughs> you sure. did that on purpose. Oh, oh, my I just, God. I, I, I disavow it. everything that's been said. <laughs> hey, you know, you know the, the Pope has an opinion. We have a right to respond to that opinion. Mm, of course. Right. Yeah, but there's a lot of opinion out there. So it's it's Hamas. Uh, it's also the Pope. Russia. Did Wait Russia come out for this? In the April? United Nations. The Turks, the Palestinians, the Germans. I mean, gosh. But don't you think it's possible, Kimberly, Russia, that after the shock sport. of this announcement, sure, and people have time, if, if things don't become fire and fury in the Middle East, um, that perhaps other nations will follow our lead and, in fact, move their embassies to Jerusalem as well? Yes, I think there always has to be a trailblazer, and President Trump has always been comfortable with doing that, you know, in his life historically and throughout his business, you know, career. I think, again, this was a bold and decisive, it's a historic moment, and, you know, Israel is a sovereign state, and they have every right to be able to decide and choose where their capital is and where they want uh, embassies and stuff to be. So I think the United States is respecting their sovereignty and their decision and their choice and honoring that. Can I just address, Juan, yes. Juan said that um, there's a power vacuum in the Middle East and Iran's now empowered. I think that's probably because President Obama gave them trillions of dollars and withdrew <laughs> precipitously from Iraq. So I, I also think that this spurs the Mideast peace process, whatever that means, Greg, because <laughs> Hold it all of and everything they did change. before by putting this on the table, the Jerusalem issue with everything else in the negotiation hadn't worked. So I think what the president's doing is say, let's try something different, yep. AKA in your words, shake it up. And this makes everybody re-engage, makes both stakeholders come back to the table with a little more urgency. And yeah. I think that's good. And I think they're sequencing. Yeah. Right. So they make this announcement. And then today, somebody on background from the White House said that they expect within the next 12 to 14 months to have more of a fleshed out plan. So then you actually have some time for it to take hold. So I think then you have to think of it in terms, of, Jesse said, symbolic. And I think that while Kimberly said this is a historic day, I think of it as symbolic and a political gesture because we're not actually moving the embassy anytime soon. He's going to sign another waiver that says the embassy will remain in Tel Aviv and then, then say, oh, for what? six months, right? Every six months you keep doing it. He's, he said, or apparently... I think this is what the president's aide said today, according to the news. It will just take some time. That it will sure. take years before they can even think about it, Jesse, because they got to build it. They got to find a contractor, land, and all that. But all it's happening. Wall. So it's going to take like as long as the wall. Is yeah. that yeah. 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 We're in unison. We're speaker <laughs> system. Yeah. All right. Times like person of the year. Uh, coming up, a big announcement coming from embattled Senator Al Franken. Uh, I think they just changed the teams on me. Uh, must be, have some news about Al Franken. Stay tuned. Next. Yeah. Today, Time Magazine named the Silence Breakers its person of the year as we're seeing more fallout from the massive movement today. Six women filed a class action lawsuit against Harvey Weinstein and his former companies. They say they're representing hundreds who have been harassed or assaulted by the disgraced movie mogul. Meanwhile, Al Franken, due to make a big announcement tomorrow following growing calls within his own party for him to resign. That, comes including, that call includes party leader Chuck Schumer, who just released a statement calling for Franken to, quote, step down immediately. What do you make of this, Greg? Um, well, the, Franken's got another accusation from a woman who was at his radio show. This happened today. And he lunged at her and tried to kiss her, and he's denying that. But I know two people that he's personally done this to, right. two people that I've known for a while. So the idea that this person that's, that is accusing him is creating this incident with easily discernible details. She was at his radio show. She was working for a congressperson, and she was gathering her stuff, and he lunged at her. And he looks at this as some kind of offensive comedic gesture that is his kind of tradition. That's his shtick. That's his shtick, I guess. But the thing is, I think he has no idea how many times he's done this. Mm. And I think uh, tomorrow is his last day. And I think... One of the strategies here is that if he's gone and more is elected, then the Democrats can say that only the Republicans have sex pests, mm -hmm. that the Democrats purge and the Republicans protect. I think that's going to be their strategy. It's not a dumb one. Jesse, you know, the big news today is you've got seven, I believe now more than seven Democrats, but it started with seven Democratic women, including 
Patty Murray, who's kind of the senior leader uh, among women and Democrats on Capitol Hill, calling for Franken to resign. This is a big shift from the, uh, what we've seen in the last week. What do you make of it? Yeah, I mean, it was about time. I think the ladies had heard enough. They probably had had enough when they saw the picture of him doing that. But the latest allegation where he goes in for the kiss, but the worst part was when she denied him, he said, I'm an entertainer. I'm entitled to do this. And that, I think that sums this whole thing up perfectly is because power is so intoxicating. And when you continue to get away with it without any consequence, you're emboldened. And when people surrounding you allow you to do it, it emboldens you even, even more. So that with the Me Too movement, um, I think we were, you know, kind of joking around in the green room the other day about, you know, when are we going to see a backlash to this? Because people are now talking about this. And, you know, we were talking about you know, when women sometimes make a joke about a man, are they going to be held to the same standard men are held to? Are we now going to see next possibly a woman being accused of sexually harassing a guy. There already is one on uh, a woman from The Voice. Oh, a really? contestant, yes. Right. So I read I, too much gossip. I think this whole thing is going to continue to swirl around, and who knows where it can go, but I think everyone's awake to it right now, and that's a good thing. And as long as you're conscientious of what you're doing and what you're doing is wrong, I, I think that there's going to be a lot of progress. So, Kimberly, so here's the thing that strikes me. None of these allegations, and I got to check out what Greg was talking about in terms of the most recent one, took place when Franken was a politician, elected official. Same with this one, he wasn't. Okay, so this was before he was elected to office. Right. And I heard from Democrats, well, this is different than things that have happened with people who are in office or who, like Conyers, was using his office funds to pay off a woman. To pay off, yeah, yeah so, accusers. So exactly, what do you think is the logic? Why did all of a sudden all these Democratic women rush on Franken? You know, because I think there really is, uh, you know, no tolerance for this kind of behavior. And if he is a public figure and representing the people, and this is somebody, remember Danny, we were talking about, that was considering even probably a run for president. You know, there goes my prediction. I know, he really blew it for not, not really. No. <laughs> anyway, so I think that they want to make a strong stand. You see, like Kamala Harris and others coming out saying, you know, this can, this conduct and behavior cannot be condoned and or abided by. So uh, to me, it's not a surprise, especially given the cover of time, the the mood, the focus on these issues right now. It's very, um, you know, I guess it's resonating in terms of the public, and you've seen it across all different professions. So I think that this is something that wasn't surprising, especially with a new accuser and I think when you see Schumer as well calling for it so let's see what happens tomorrow he's making an announcement what do you think of the the time selection Dana me too that that hashtag the person of the year well I think there was a lot there were they had a lot of good options for the possibilities because this, this was such a year of consequence a 2017 I think easily President Trump could have been the one I think that the the King Salman of Saudi Arabia he won the poll who knows how many bots voted, but um, I think they, that this movement obviously is a big societal changing event, so I think that that made sense. I think for Franken, uh, the only way to make this end is if he resigns for himself, for, hi for him and his family. I mean, there might still be more accusers that come out, but he's putting his family through a lot, and now Minnesota, the voters, they de deserve better, so if he's going to resign, he might not even wait till tomorrow. I mean, with Chuck Schumer coming out and saying yeah, he wants it. it immediately, might not wait till tomorrow. because I don't see how he was. cannot resign. The other thing point. I would just mention, we, t we led with also talking about Harvey Weinstein. That New York Times piece today, yeah. byline of uh, five different reporters. If you haven't read it, you should, or listen to the daily podcast from the New York Times. What he was making people who work for him do oh, yeah. in order to have, get this done, and they called it the complicity machine, it is worth reading. It is so chilling that, any, that someone would even think of that. And then people who brought, brought it up to HR, they got fired. So I think that that problem is going to continue in the entertainment One industry. One quick too. question, then. Apparently a woman is trying to sue President Trump and bring out all of these issues into court. Will that go anywhere? I don't know. You know, it depends I, on if she's granted standing anywhere, I suppose. I think that time, there could have been another winner or an honorable mention for the person or thing of the year. What had a continuous effect over the year? Like, what object had continuous... Twitter? What? Twitter? 
uh, t- Trump's tweets. Mm. Like Trump's tweets every single day had an impact on people. That would have been an interesting honorable mention or maybe a share. I don't know. Was that well, a person? That- no, like, but that's yes. that's Greg's genius. That was an interesting, but it's not a person. Like, well, no, but neither. You know, well, <laughs> this was a hashtag movement right. on Twitter. No, right. but yeah, yeah, but I think it gained then momentum they have to after put Weinstein. President Trump then on the cover with his they Twitter handle. They would oh not. my gosh, here we go. Did the FBI give special treatment to Hillary Clinton in her email investigation? Lawmakers, they want answers. But now you'll hear it here on the pod. Next. People who hate President Trump and the FBI were assigned to investigate him while Hillary Clinton was protected time and time again by sympathizers. GOP lawmakers demanding answers and investigation into that today. I'm proud to be joined by my fellow conservatives in the House to call for an investigation into the FBI's procedures that allowed Hillary Clinton to receive special treatment. We'll also investigate the unprecedented bias against President Trump that exists when we allow people who hate the president to participate in the investigations against him. It is clear that Hillary Clinton has received break after break after break from the FBI. If Mueller was doing such a great job on investigating the Russian collusion, why could he have not found the conflict of interest uh, within their own agency? And this just into Fox, we just learned that not only was FBI agent Peter Strzok involved in the interview of Hillary Clinton, he was also on the team that looked into the thousands of emails which ended up on Huma Abedin and Anthony Weiner's laptop. Greg, Mm. has this Mueller investigation been completely compromised beyond repair? I don't know. It seems that Hillary's got more breaks than a pool hall. <laughs> we'll be right back. I mean, if you want collusion, it's, Jeez. I mean, don't, don't retire on that one. <laughs> hey, look, You've I'm had running better. out of things to say about this topic. No, but Hillary really, she, she treated the FBI the way Bill treated interns. It was a hot tub of special treatment. Ooh. This is the collusion. This is the collusion. And it's funny because the media has been all about collusion with the Russians, and that's dwindling. For Christmas, they expected a pony, and now all they're gonna get is a lump of coal, Mm. which is fitting, because we've revitalized the coaling industry. Oh, very nice, I I liked how you tied that all Coal is back. Uh, Dana, as the most fair and balanced person on this table, (laughs) um, excluding myself, do you think (laughs) that (laughs) Mueller's and his team's integrity has now clouded this issue so much where whatever he does next, fair-minded people are going to say and have doubts about the motivation. Fair-minded people? Yeah. And we're talking about fair-minded people? Yeah, let's, as fair, we're going to go to um, you for my fair-minded correspondent. <laughs> I, I don't think so at this point. I Not think yet. That part of it is that legal issues or legal investigations are usually super locked down and quiet and nobody talks. And so Mueller hasn't given an interview. He doesn't talk to anybody. So basically there's all these allegations swirling around and they can't really defend themselves. Though I I think one of the defenses that some people have pointed out is that when he found out about Strzok and his text messages, he was fired from the team. So he's probably irritated that his investigation has been tainted by somebody who did something before he even got there. But then I also think there's this question of, uh, can you have personal opinions and still do a professional job in your career. So you said I'm the most fair and balanced person. So like if we were talking about um, a pro-life issue, uh, could I be fair and balanced on that even though I have a personal point of view? I would like to try to be, um, but we all have these certain things that we might have texted to somebody. Like if I sent to my husband how I felt about an issue, does that then become part of investigation? I'm not sure. Here's the other thing though. Chris Ray of the FBI, the Mm -hmm. new FBI director, he testifies tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So we might get more clarity on what happened if he happens to know. But also just remember, before he left, um, Comey said that the FBI is investigating ISIS in all 50 states. So having the, the, actually, the, the, it's so irritating to me that people did this funny business that had a private email server that Hillary Clinton did that, mm-hmm. that Uma Abedin and Anthony Weiner have to be investigated. Like we have serious problems and we have the FBI needs to be focused on those and not necessarily on people's shenanigans on text. Okay, well, let me ask you to Dana's point, Juan. If I am a huge Trump supporter, Trump donor, if would it be fair? <laughs> 
for me what a as stretch. an FBI agent to investigate Hillary Clinton. Could yeah. I put that aside? I hope you could if you were you, and, and you think that I could and you think that would be fair? I think well, you could. I think it could, but I, but I don't well, know. thank you. But let me just say, <laughs> these that that FBI, FMC, agents, FBI agents, and especially Strzok, who's greatly respected in the FBI community, let me just tell you, they have to prove themselves. It's not as if they got there on the basis of their political affiliation or they like or don't like this candidate. This is a situation where I think if you want to impugn people on the basis that they were texting or tweeting, we discussed this yesterday, during the presidential debate and telling their he was involved with a woman, he's telling the woman what he thinks, I don't see how that rules out this guy as a good investigator. And hopefully, Chris Ray, uh, the FBI director, will make that plain. But the larger point to me is we have real news here about the Deutsche Bank subpoena, right, that you said didn't happen. It's on the front page of the Wall Street Journal wait, today. Wait, wait, wait. The, the Bloomberg News just retracted no. their report that said that Trump's financial no, no, no. records were subpoenaed. It's it was only records that were associated oh, with Trump's Oh, now you're admitting. Associates. I see. So in other words, wait, wait, this is a legitimate yesterday. part yeah. of this. How did this you is, let him do that? This is a legitimate <laughs> part of the investigation. They are looking into financial transactions involving Trump and his associates. No, not Trump. With the Deutsche <laughs> Not Trump. I see. Yeah. Just his well, let me just say, I I don't quickly. understand why people are so quick <laughs> to fall for this. You see all these congressmen standing there, all Freedom Caucus guys, the far right wing of the Republican Party, essentially acting like Devin Nunes as stooges for Donald Trump, oh so that God. people don't pay attention to the real news, which is the Crazy. Russia investigation. Right. That's uh, wild. Wild. Wow. Wow. Ron Russia Williams making friends left and not oh, right. Like <laughs> Yeah, okay. All right. That was a doozy. Final thoughts, Kimberly. Okay. So, can I say this on behalf of the phenomenal men and women in the FBI, many of which that I know and have worked with over the years and personally um, know, that they're fantastic. They work really hard. They take the office and the job that they do very seriously to protect yeah. this country. Um, it's always a good thing when you have transparency and um, illumination on issues like this to be able to see. I think it would only make the FBI stronger and better. And sometimes you need some shakeup at the top to be able to rework the whole dynamic of an organization. And that's what I think we're going to see here. I, I do call into question, as a former prosecutor, then the um, you know credibility of some aspects of this investigation. I certainly want to hear more because we would hope you know that they uh, uphold the oath to be fair mm -hmm. and to just be fair arbiters of the facts and let the investigation take them where it's supposed to go absent uh, and bereft of any kind of, you know, ideological preference. Okay. President Obama taking some new swipes at President Trump. Greg takes them on next. The door hangs over. <laughs> Power trip. Last Saturday, Barack Obama was in Paris, or what I like to call the poor man's Cleveland, <laughs> where he knocked Donald Trump for pulling out of the climate deal. Hmm, I wonder if he said he grants that at the moment we have a temporary absence of American leadership in the issue. I grant you that at the moment we have a temporary uh, absence of American leadership on the issue. <laughs> ah, he's so predictable. But so is the French audience who laughed. They also find mimes funny. Fact is, making a decision that bugs the French is not bad leadership. Actually, it's the opposite. Knowing you'll come off as the bad guy among our more sophisticated European peers, and you still do it anyway, that's cool. And let's face it, how many times have we been right versus the French? <laughs> uh -huh. Trump expressed real leadership here. Remember, even environmentalists admit that the accord sucks. Mm -hmm. It takes $100 trillion, funds that could wipe out global poverty, hunger, and disease three times over to maybe affect a fraction of a degree over a century. It's murderous, callous, virtue signaling. Worse, as Obama jokes, terrorists plot to kill England's prime minister. Terror. Remember when there was an absence of leadership on that? That's the real lesson of 2016, a priority adjustment regarding global threats. Something France could use, too. That country has suffered from so many deadly terror attacks. And yet here they chuckle with a guy who, after one attack, sent them James Taylor. <laughs> but I guess in Obama's mind, ISIS was always JV and Cole was always varsity. <laughs>
So, you know, Dana, it, it strikes me that President Obama, he's kind of like one of those com traveling comedians when he shows up at a place, he finds out where he's from, and he starts saying nice things about Cleveland or whatever. It's like this. He shows up, and he knows he can get a I joke. Love I love the Browns. Yes, but he can make a joke about Trump because he knows he's going to get a and laugh. He tries to sort of skirt it so that he doesn't, you know, he doesn't yeah. say President Trump's name so that yeah. there wouldn't be, you know, that outrage. Um, I guess that there's probably other ways that, that he could have done it, but... Um, I do. Ag I agree that this is pretty bold uh, to do and to pulling out the Paris Accords. Um, and it was similar, like when President Bush pulled out of the Kyoto uh, mm -hmm. Protocol, he paid the price for that in diplomacy yeah. every step of the way because the European capitals thought that we were terrible and the we're stupid third, and the third, ignorant. The third world nations wanted more uh, from the president on that. And so I think that President Trump has got us back to the place where now, even in pop culture television, when they're talking about climate change, they have to admit that we have reduced our carbon footprint. And now the refrain is, but we still have to do more. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesse, you know what kills me is that there is this perception that if you are against the Paris Accords, somehow you are less knowledgeable of the Accords, when in fact, the people who are for the Paris Accords are the ones most ignorant because they don't know how much it's going to cost and what it's going to actually affect compared to what you could do with the money elsewhere. Are you calling Juan ignorant? That's not nice, guys. That was what you call a subtweet. <laughs> it was a subtweet. I was talking about Juan without it saying it to Juan. Oh, those are never a good idea. Oh, the variables. <laughs> go to the variables. Um, listen, it's easy to fight climate change because climate oh, change doesn't fight back. The the absence of American leadership was when Obama was leading from behind. He didn't lead on ISIS. Remember, he said they didn't have a strategy. Mm -hmm. He didn't lead on North Korea. He kicked the can down the road. Didn't lead on <laughs> Syria. Remember, Putin had to come in and have him save face. And he definitely didn't lead on Russian interference in our election. He sat by and said nothing and only said something after the election. Obama has no credibility here. You know, Juan, after seeing this performance, do you agree with me that Obama should be pre-impeached, like we should go back and impeach him. Post-impeached. Post-impeached. No, no. Let me just say, you're, you're not as bad as some people on Fox, because I, I, somebody said as he should... some go, people. Yeah, some people. Somebody said he should be arrested. No. That they should bring him back and arrest him. That, that was me in my kill me mask. Oh, <laughs> I, thought it was you Francis Do kill me. I thought it was Dobbs, I think. But, but my he point... He has that mask, too. Yes. Oh, he does? <laughs> yeah. We love to wear uh, Yes. It's masked now. They're like, they're like twinning. They sort of start to resemble each other. Uh, but anyway, it seems to me that, in <laughs> fact, while he was over there, he was not only talking, you know, with the French, but saying to all the business and the activists in Paris that, guess what, this deal has held together despite the United States pulling out. Now, what does that say? The rest of the world is saying, yeah, we understand. But we're always the right. Need. They're no, wrong. Oh, I see. No, when, when, when has the world been right and we've been wrong? Oh, gosh. <laughs> come on. Oh, yeah. come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. This Let is not a just single example. I'm pointing at a watch, but, and I don't have one on. But by the way, by the way, I think that Al Qaeda and its resurgence yes. is a real current threat. I agree. Threat. And I you agree. guys go on and on. Hey. Oh, so what do you mean? Oh my God. Go on and on about, about terror. You know, no, 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 terror. You need to be specific instead of because when you speak in general terms, <laughs> right. you don't really make yes. sense. Oh yes. Oh. I don't that's the problem. We've only been right on this for, I don't know how long. Oh, yeah. Kimberly. So, yeah, let's talk about the reality of the situation with job numbers. Oh, by the way, the president's approval numbers up. ISIS is getting crushed. Don't worry, Juan. He's getting to Al-Qaeda, too. So we're going to have to add that to the <laughs> oh, list hopeful. of Jesse's delight and fascination but with the accomplishments. But where did you get that his ap approval numbers are up? I see his numbers. Oh, terrible. yes. They yeah, are. Right out of the 20s into the 30s. <laughs> okay. That's you know what? You're, you're winning. The winning is just too much these days. Wait, Juan. Pulls, Juan. Juan. Northbound, Wake Juan. Juan. Northbound. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't forget the travel ban. Travel See, so ban. So many things are happening. Court. So yes. many things are happening that yes. you can't keep up, Juan. I know. Too much winning. Yes. Too much winning. It's that's right. All right. I guess I should move on now. Do Kimberly's it. been waiting all show to break out some food. Hope it's good at oh, we the are table. Good. I'm not reading this next part. Sprinkle Don't miss it next. <laughs> Don't miss it next. <laughs> it's time now for Kimberly's food court. But wait, there's more because my food court today meets roll it. Kimberly, yeah, dating. <laughs> You know it. Oh, yeah. All right. Jesse loves it. You all know the fastest way to my heart is through my stomach, indeed. And apparently, I'm not alone because a new study conducted by the dating website Zux has found that love seekers who mentioned food in their dating profile have boosted their odds of making a match by as much as 144%. Wow. But not just any food. Slow it down, okay? Guacamole, <laughs> chocolate. 
and sushi are among some of the most alluring <laughs> edibles to mention for those looking for the one. Boy, did I sell that segment. <laughs> you did. <laughs> okay, Jesse, do you think yes. this makes sense? It does because women like guac, and here's why. It gives them an excuse to eat chips because then they put <laughs> so the true. guac on the chip and they feel like it's a healthy snack. You know that's true, right? Same thing with sushi. They consider that like low-calorie seafood, but then when you load it up with spicy wasabi mayonnaise, maybe it doesn't accomplish it. And who can't like chocolate? Obviously, that's the dessert. Okay, but all right, so that's awesome. But do you think it makes men attracted to women? Yes, more? because when men say that, you know, something about sushi, it says that they can afford sushi <laughs> and that they might take you out to a sushi dinner instead of taking you out to like McDonald's or the Apple. I like McDonald's though. Well, you're different, Kimberly. You yes. have great taste in fast food. Thank you so much. So do you, because we match like 13 year old uh, boys true. or something. We have a terrible today. diet. Well, I mean, it looks good, right? Yeah. So, all right, Dana, what do you think? Well, I noticed that the quinoa and kale <laughs> are not on the list <laughs> of things. Absolutely I've never written not. a dating profile. I wouldn't know what to say, but I guess I would I would throw a Hershey kiss on there. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've been eating the kisses. I like that. Greg, what do you think? You're I a big researcher. I guess you'd call these dating apps. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, um, that was terrifying. The, uh, they need a dating app for people who don't like to date. So basically, it's like, hi, I'm Greg. Can I come over to watch TV? Then you move in, you get married, you get fat. Just skip all the dating. Dating's overrated. It really God. is. No, it's terrible. Dating is terrible. Oh, my God. You terrified me. You just blew out my earpiece. I was so nuts. <laughs> okay, um, Juan, you love food, too. You're a foodie. I'd say this end of the table is definitely yeah. the foodies. Well, you know, I, I don't see how you lose with this because what do you do if you go on a date? Usually you go out to dinner, right? Right. You say, let's, let's go eat something. So you, the whole thing is, it's very interesting when you're on a date because it's first date, you know, who's going to pay? And I think women... That's actually a question. Obviously. Who's going to pay? Yeah. I know the, the woman, obviously. The wo well, see, that's, that, you go out with a certain type of woman. Uh, but, what type would that <laughs> be one? But I got to say, I just think this is a winner, Kimberly. Yes, what a, a pasta, combination. salad, cheesecake, and burgers. And chocolate cake and cheese and pasta. But gotta, Kimberly's food I, I, court I know we have to go, but this is important. Dating. We're trying to help people. Number producer. four says salad. The bottom line is, I think men love it when yes. a woman eats and has a good appetite and appreciates the food and doesn't like pick and act weird just be comfortable with yourself and own it love it and love will find you all right one more thing is up next Rain makes cold. one more thing. I had to match Jesse on a little puppy video. So check this out. You ever ride in the car with your dog and you're worried about, you know, it, it needing a seatbelt because you think, well, if there's an accident, what will happen? So this company named the Rock, uh, Rocketeer Pack um, is actually from Zugo Pet. So that's what it's called. But so it's only for dogs that are 25 pounds or less. Um, Jasper would not fit. But can you imagine that would not work? I don't think that this is going <laughs> no. to work. Those dogs look kind of happy, but I don't know. What do you think? Safe. Let it, let, call us and let us know. It's 145 Is that bucks. normal? I mean. No, Kimberly, you might need this for your for your car when you're going to ride around with the pups. With the uh, Super Mario Brothers? Yeah, right. yeah, I think it's pretty interesting. Juan, you're next. Well, Santa Claus is coming to town. The other day I showed you a picture of my family with Santa at the mall. You remember that. But it doesn't compare to the visit that Santa made to comfort children who have lost everything in California's wildfires. Aww. At the Ventura County Fairgrounds Fire Shelter, children are being treated to a visit with the lovable Santa. Many of the children, having lost so much, had long lists of gift requests. But to me, the most touching was one little boy. He wanted nothing more from Santa than a hug. Our thoughts and prayers are with all the people affected dealing with fire and smoke this holiday season. Indeed, and they're ha it's happening as we speak. Greg, you're Next. All right. I had a week off on my podcast, but I got a new one up tonight. Christina Hoff Summers, amazing author and speaker, uh, is going to be on tonight. We're going to talk about pervopocalypse, as I like to call it, all of the riots of sexual harassment. Um, and we're going to talk about campus speech. We're also going to talk about this, the unusual case of Sam Cedar, mm -hmm. who's lost a contract to MSNBC over an ironic tweet. And MSNBC just acted like complete jackasses yep. and, uh, and let the guy go over a tweet that was ironic and not sincere. We talk about that as well. They should actually give him his job back. That's it Indeed, for or me. Or somebody else should hire him. Okay. All right, Jesse, 
see. All right, I'll see one Santa video, and I'll raise you one. Okay. Skydiving Santa delivering toys to some boys and girls in Tampa. That's Roll it. That's pretty cool. his leg but he's oh my God, this in is the hospital i mean santa broke his leg and um, <laughs> listen this is really being santa is dangerous you need your reindeer oh my gosh that was troubling kimberly oh, help us there was, there was no happy ending there i i disapprove okay so this is a very sweet story 81 year old rosalind gutman was playing online um this game called words with friends you may know mm -hmm. it and she was randomly paired up with another player who's 22 years old an aspiring rapper named spencer slayon so she used the word fat, P-H-A-T, and which is slang for excellent, Greg. I had no and, idea. And Spencer was floored that she knew the word. They started messaging each other. An amazing friendship was born. And after playing hundreds of games together online, he decided to surprise her and fly down to Florida to meet her and That's give her a so big hug cute. in person. And they continue to play this game together, Words with Friends, and now are also Facebook friends indeed. That's so nice. Isn't this I the cutest you were just one? They got engaged and got married. <laughs> no, I don't have weirdo one more things like this guy. Why would you get married? All right, set your DVRs. <laughs> never miss an episode of the pod. Special <laughs> report up next with Brett Bear. Hi, Brett. Hey, Dana. Thank you.